Hey there, so I thought I'd take a look at what's actually inside my Wi-Fi controllers I just bought. These ones are CN Bingo, very similar to the Sonoffs and all the other brands. A uh, couple of things made me open it up. So this is an on-off switch, just got a big relay, only does contact or no contact. Yeah, fair enough, but for example, 1500 watts here, 300 watts on the LED side. That's fair enough, apart from the fact that the ad rates them for 2200 watts. We look here, and we have a 10 amp relay inside. So they are rated for 2200 watts. Uh, grand, absolutely fine, but wanted to have a look because I will probably misuse these. One of the things I was hoping to do was a coffee machine with it, so I wanted to have a look at it. You can see here, this routered slot actually has a piece of plastic separating it from the low voltage side, which is actually a pretty nice touch. Uh, I'm, I'm reasonably impressed with that. The other thing was I wanted to have a look and sort of see what my options were because these are just a switch, power on, power off, so unless you're going to get into a fair scheme if you want a physical switch on your lamp you need a way of controlling it. Thankfully we get that with these. This switch here, now the lamp's just an example but for example some of the lamps I've built I would still like to have a button on them. At the minute I have big toggle switches so I'll need to think of something better for that. And these two contacts here and here or here and here if you solder a switch to them, just a momentary switch you can have control again and that that's pleasing. Uh, the isolation's pleasing as well. Interestingly this is neutral, and live is on the back of the board. As far as these switches go, yeah, simple enough. They take a little power feed off in here, and pretty much everything on here. I haven't looked at this this chip here. I'm just gonna have a look at it now. Let's see if I can see. Oh, of course it's got nothing nothing to read on it. Uh, I don't think that that chip is doing anything more than potentially being like an H-bridge type st thing to drive the signal from the coil. I'll probably figure that out. Hmm. Chip's there. And it's here. What on earth is that doing? Could be part of the power supply too for this little board, which is doing all the thinking. Now, one thing you see that dinky little antenna there. That dinky little antenna isn't as bad as I expected it to be because I opened these before I uh, bothered using them. Partly because there's some things, you know, I'm going to have to be chiseling out lumps of wood and everything to hide these inside stuff. Given the half a watt rated, well, it says less than half a watt, they do get warmish. Now that I've ran one tested it, the, you know, half a watt power consumption on idle means these may or may not live. But basically this little board is everything there is to it as far as smarts go. Everything here just powers the board. And the relay is 10 amps, 250 volt VAC, or VAC, not volt, VAC. That's like pin numbers, isn't it? Uh, 15 volts if you're at 125, so America, I guess, or wherever else uses lower voltages. Uh, should be grand. 
the reason I wanted to have a look at one was my coffee machine, which I've now replaced with one that has electronic controls that I can interfere with with an Arduino. So that's dumb. As far as it goes for me. But, uh, yeah, I'd be happy enough using these on a lot of things. Wouldn't... Given, given that LED rating, switching power supplies are going to be a problem for it in general. The other thing that might be a problem for it is big inductive loads. I suspect that rating is not just about it being able to control the relay. The relay itself doesn't really care about loads apart from you know the spikes that it might see from switching. Which we have... Let's have a look here. Do we have any mitigation? So there's our relay. Mm. Do you know, we really don't have much in the way of mitigation for big inductive spikes. So that would definitely lower the rating for LEDs and the likes of that, but also I would I would assume if you put an absolutely monstrous fan or something on this, you might see the same issues. But overall, uh twenty five quid for four of them, was it? Well let me just scroll up the list and see. How much did I actually pay for these? So yeah, 25 quid. Well, 27. Uh, the wattage on the technical details is 1500. And then 2200 in the instructions, 1500 on this box here. So, I would take that to be a general guide. I think you could run into issues far lower than 300 watts. Given this is a really compact board, and I think you could see some serious noise issues just depending on what you're running. Because this little board is pretty much sitting between the actual, uh, you know, if there's one trace here, the other goes straight up the back. I suppose it's not too bad, but I could see it, you know, suffering interference as a result. Uh, the button's a good touch, just in the sense that what it does is on-off. These also have an app that will let you put them on previous power state. So, yeah, pretty handy overall. As far as wiring them in goes, if you look down there, we see these terminals. They're okay, they're definitely sized for lamp cord. You could get you could get UK thir thirteen amp wires in there, but you'd really, really struggle with anything big. Also nice. Oh, also very stiff. Ah, I just broke it off because I'm good like that, you know. Bah. Ah. Uh, this is going to go back on with one hand. I assume that's how it went. There it is. So now I'm going to break it off again. But anyway, if you try and do this with two hands, it's much easier. Uh, cute little ears for, you know, screwing these down to surfaces, which is nice. So positive retention, nothing in terms of the, you know, retention, retention for the actual cable sheath, so these go inside stuff. Yes, they are actually isolated. These are tight, tight snap down, but overall, good job on that. Yes, you could use them open, but they're not really intended for it by the looks of it. I think they're more just this is this is a nice job. 
overall. Um, but I don't think they intended them to be sitting around. Uh, no IP rating of any kind. Uh, looking at the insides of the box, you can see what I mean. Just, yeah. Here, you can see we have some actual isolation. There are routered slots on the rest of the board for the same reasons. Yeah. It's not a hideous job. And they work okay. They're pretty responsive and so far they haven't dropped out on me. Did have one issue getting connected to these initially and that was changing my Wi-Fi channel not from 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. You know I had a separate network already. What I found was that on channel 1 for whatever reason this little box just didn't pick it up at all. So yeah we'll see. We'll see how they fare but for now I think they're a reasonable deal. There's plenty out there that are very similar. This chintzy switch with its big wobble action is fine when it's in here because it's retained by the case. You know, I can't actually wobble it around anymore. Uh, but yeah, it also gives you a provision. I think the easiest thing to do would be to just lop this off if you needed to. Fly a couple of wires out through the hole this will leave. And momentary switch on the end. There you go. You have manual control again as well. Yeah, that's about the height of it for these. I'm reasonably pleased with them so far, and I've got a couple of projects on the go. First is just lamps I've made. But after that, I think I'll try and do something a bit weirder just to entertain myself.